Astrophotography is full of fun acronyms. In this video, I want to tell you about PISWA, or Push Start Walk Away Astronomy. But really, I want to show you what a fully automated sequence can look like if you're using Nina. Welcome to Alaskan Astro. So I'm already polar aligned because I've had the mount set up for the last few days out here. I have all my stuff plugged in, so we're going to assume that that's done. I also made my sequence already in Nina. You could either have a new one that you're starting, or in my case, picking up one that I've done before. So then we go down here, hit the connect button, reconnect all devices. Okay, everything should just start reconnecting. PHD2 pops up and it gets ready. Green Swamp server is already up and running, shows us which way our telescope is pointing. And we hop into Nina, go to our camera, make sure to turn on cooling. Then go over to the telescope, make sure to unpark it. And then go to the sequence tab. This is the really hard part. We go all the way down here, press start sequence. It's going to say that we're not quite cooled yet. That's fine for now. It'll get there. Hit OK and it should start slewing. And then we go inside, because it's cold. But really what happens after you press start is actually pretty cool. I'll show you as it comes up here. The first thing it does is it'll slew, and then it'll plate solve. So it takes an image, it analyzes the stars, it compares them against where they should be, and it sees if the telescope needs to move at all. It decided that it was right on target, which makes sense since I had to reset this to film it and it was already on target. Next, it's going to run autofocus. So it's going to take an image and see, basically it's going to measure how big the stars are. And this is on the filter that we're shooting. It's going to measure how big around the stars are and kind of get a baseline reference to see if it's making things better or worse. So now it's going to do a big offset, move the focuser in one direction. And you'll see when that image comes in, it'll be nice and blurry. Yep. So now it's going to move the focuser back the other direction. And it's basically looking, this chart up and down is how big the stars are, left, right, is the focuser position. You can kind of imagine the focuser going in and out and the stars getting smaller and larger. So it's going down this curve, it's mathing its way into figuring out where the best point of focus is, and then it'll lock in on that spot. So now it's taking one final image at the new focus position to see if it was better or worse. It seems like it liked it. So what happened in the background there was PHD2 got the signal to start. If we go over there, we can see that it automatically chose a guide star. It has a good profile, not too bright, so that it has a completely blown out center, but not too dim that it's going to lose it. And started guiding because we've already been calibrated since we haven't moved anything around. And then that information's back in Nina and we're taking our first exposure. And honestly at this point, I would actually go back inside and warm up. There's a few things that need to happen for us to truly be able to walk away from our setup for the night. One of them is how Nina monitors the size of the stars throughout the night. And if it hits a certain threshold, it'll run a new autofocus routine and get the stars nice and tight again. Another is auto meridian flips. Basically Nina monitors when the scope needs to flip to the other side of the mount. Then it'll do that, plate solve to get back on target, even run autofocus again, and tell PHD2 to pick a new guide star and continue guiding. Sort of similar, you can line up several targets throughout the night and tell Nina to slew to the next target when it's done with one of them. It'll make the move and then plate solve to make sure that it's centered up. Our first sub came in. Honestly, I do usually stick around outside until I see the first come in just to make sure everything is going all right. Um, honestly, I was kind of blown away by this. I 
basically set this sequence up just so that I could film something and I am just blown away by the detail that I got in a single five minute sub. This is at one one view. It's just beautiful. So maybe I'll actually have to shoot this as a project.